This is the March 28th, 2023 meeting of the Krishna Public Library Board of Trustees. We are being audio taped and videotaped, and we do have a quorum. First item on the agenda today is the Secretary's Report from January 31st. Does anyone have any clarifications or questions on those minutes? We just need a motion. Motion to accept. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Second item is the budget. Okay. So you haven't seen it in about two months, so it does look a little different, which is what, as it should. <laughs> um, you'll see salaries were 73.2% spent out, which is expected. Um, Due to turnover, we most definitely will have an overage in the tech line. We've had that vacant children's room assistant position since um, the very end of December. Um, and then some additional turnover, so there will definitely be an overage um, of approximately $7,000 at this point. Um, my estimation could be wrong, but that's <coughs> my estimate is around 7000 in that line. Um, and you'll start to see it lag behind the library tech line. You'll start to see lag behind um, the director and patron service <coughs> associates line a little bit more, I think, as time goes on. Um, we do also have a little bit of a short line, a short line, a shortfall <laughs> in the custodian line um, of just a couple hundred dollars, which was just, I think, some poor math last year on my part. So um, that'll easily be covered by the overage in the tech line. So not at all concerning, but it's going to become more obvious as we get into the last quarter of the fiscal year, which seems impossible. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't have any concerns in operating. Our materials line will be spent out within the next month or so, which is typically how it goes every year. And we'll begin spending state aid to meet our materials expenditure requirement. Um, but other than that, I think everything is um, pretty status unless you have any questions for me. We're at 74.8% spent out, which three quarters of the way through is pretty down on the mark, 75% at three quarters. So. You seem to be doing great with the energy, too. Yes. It seems like we should have spent more. It than seems like we should have. The bills have been a little bit higher this year mm -hmm. than last year, um, but not like right. so concerning. And this past bill was a, like slightly less mm -hmm. than last year's. Um, at the same time last yeah. year. So, I, yeah, I think we're doing fine there. Yeah. Nice. And I'm just noticing the travel percentage spent didn't, didn't print, so I will fix that for next time. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that budget? Oh. Aye. Make a motion to accept the budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to old business. We have an update on the FY24 budget <coughs> process. So I put this on here more um, just to highlight the fact that um, the finance <coughs> committee voted unanimously for the library's budget request for FY24. Uh, which includes the full-time children's room position. So it's great news um, that that's um, feeling very possible at this moment. <laughs> um, it, you know, now it's the Board of Selectmen still will be reviewing budgets and it has to go to town meeting on May 22nd because if it goes through a town meeting, um, which is May 22nd, then on May 23rd, I'll be posting the position for July 1 <laughs> um, so that we can get going on that process. So um, I really appreciate the Finance Committee's support. They've been very supportive to us for the past eight years that I've been here. Um, and certainly this season, <coughs> and I know they're, they're expected you know, to be very conservative right now. Um, so their support means an awful lot. So. I really just wanted to, I stuck it on here just to be able to say that, so. <laughs> and, and so that you know, in case you didn't watch the meeting yourself or couldn't hear it. Um. <laughs> yes, definitely. 
we do definitely appreciate their support. Did anyone have any comments to add or questions on that? Okay. And we don't need to take any votes on that one. Um, next is the snow removal. So um, I put this on the agenda because we had talked about the snow removal process or lack thereof um, for several meetings now and luckily we didn't have any snow removal this year. Who would have who thought? Mm -hmm. um, but there still seems to be some disconnect as far as who's doing what, when and how and we need to fix that. We, we, we have to stay on top of that. So um, I plan to go and bring this back up after the budget season because right now no one's focused on mm -hmm. snow as we head into the summer. However, after the budget season and town meeting, uh, maybe like the June, July time frame, I want to put this back on the selectmen's agenda and go there and talk about some sort of a plan uh, to be able to to get that all set. Um, we need to figure out who's going to be shoveling walkways, who's going to be, you know, taking care of the of the plowing, and most importantly, the how that how that is being communicated back to Dina so that it can be filtered down to the staff. Because right now there just is no, there still is nothing, and it's it's very frustrating. So I'm going to put that, like I said, June, July time frame. I'll put that on the agenda. Um, did anyone have anything they want to add to that? No. Okay. And I will do that. Thank you. No problem. New business. Um, upcoming holiday schedule. So I wanted to just have a chance to make you aware that um, the library is opening for a half day on Good Friday per the AFSCME contract. So the part-timers are part of the AFSCME town hall contract. And per that, they get a half day for Good Friday. That hasn't impacted us um, since we've been open on Fridays because um, there was normally a, a, an MOU, a memorandum of understanding that specified library holidays separate from town hall holidays and the AFSCME members did not do an MOU this year so I when we dealt with something similar at Christmas time um, I you know worked for like two months as you know with town administration to be able to close and get the staff paid for Christmas Eve New Year's Eve um, and Christmas Day New Year's Day um, and I just it sort of fell off my radar to make a case for them to have Good Friday is a paid holiday, uh, full day paid holiday. So we're gonna open from one to three on Good Friday. There are signs on the doors. Our website has been updated. We modified the due dates with sales so that nobody has an item due that day. So if they come to return items, they, they can certainly use the book drop still, but they won't feel bad or concerned that their item was due and they can't get in the building. Um, so just to not really put that on the agenda just to be able to give you a chance to update you on that. And uh, you know, I think the members of AFSCME know that they you know, should be advocating for themselves and what they want um, when it's something like that, a Friday to open for four, um, when we're only open four hours to the public anyway. Um, just seems kind of silly to open for two, but we're doing it uh, <laughs> on April 7th. And then we will be closed the full day holiday for Patriots Day on April 17th. There's that as well. Is the AFSCME contract, is that yearly or is it every year? It's, it's, three, it's a three year contract. So they just renewed that contract the, this past year. So we still have two more year. years to go, right? Yes. So will we be able to do, or will they be able to if do? They, if they pull together to write an MOU, they will be, and then present that to the union and to town right. administration and get it approved, then they will be able to do that. Just um, for the library? Just for the library. Okay. So I've, you know, can only recommend that that's what they Correct. do and show them that that's what happened in the past when there was a different steward mm -hmm. involved and make the recommendation so like I said I advocated hard because we have never been open for Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve ever so I advocated for that right, right. just for the precedent of the library building mm -hmm. um, never having been open on Christmas Eve New Year's Eve but it just wasn't on my radar to advocate for this one and 
and um, that it was too late. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you know if the warding is half day or is it closed at noon? No, it's half. It's half day. It says half day. half day, and we go through that at Thanksgiving also, mm -hmm. and we open for a half day on Thanksgiving, um, the right. day before Thanksgiving. We don't open at eight o'clock. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. But no, so it's not eight to noon. It's just a half recognized as a half day holiday. Mm -hmm. So it's not that mm -hmm. language piece. But like, say on the day before Thanksgiving is a Wednesday when we're open to the public for nine hours. Opening for four and a half hours to the public is totally reasonable to do because a half day for us, it's based on a nine hour day open to the public. So four and a half hours is one thing. To open for two hours just seems kind of rough. Right. That's rough. Right. And again, our staff members only work four hour shifts for the mm -hmm. most part. Some of them are sometimes here for five hours and some for six, but our part timers primarily are working four hour shifts, which makes them very different from the full-time employees that work at Town Hall, and the majority of the people, as far as I understand, in that contract are full-time employees. So it is something that needs to be addressed by them as the paying members of the union. And I think I've taken it as far as I can with town administration. So um, I'm hopeful that they will act on that, and if not, then we'll be doing the same thing next year. <laughs> Who's the union rep for them? For our staff yeah. is the custodian. Yeah. So, so we'll see what happens next. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have one? Were you going to ask me something? No. Oh, no, okay. No, I'm sorry. No question, I thought no. I just nope. <laughs> thought of that. Like, oh. <laughs> any other any questions or anything on the holiday schedule? Comments or anything? <clears throat> okay, we'll move right along. Uh, Discussing your request to hold a private event in the pavilion. So this hasn't come up before until now, but we did receive a request by email and then a follow-up by phone um, to use the pavilion for a private event in September. And I brought it to Jen before putting it on the agenda just to run it by her. And, and she just to raise a couple of questions. You know, like you know, you haven't tasked me with writing a policy for the pavilion, unfortunately. Everything we do basically is policy driven here, which is one of the reasons why we have this board um, because you, it's your policies that you know you approve um, as the governing body of the board. Um, but um, you have a task me of the writing of policy for the pavilion. I certainly will if you will like me to, the same way we have one for the community room space and for outside groups to hold private events in the community room. Um, but it, it's not like a question that can be a simple yes or no because it immediately raises questions of does a staff member need to be <coughs> present if it's off hours how do we get a staff member to be present um, are we required to have the building open for the bathroom even though they want to be in the pavilion but is there some legality to having you know an available restroom on the property um, since we don't have any kind of outside um, bathroom um, will parking be an issue? Would there be a fee involved? I mean, there's a lot of questions that come up, so it's not a simple, oh, yes, sure, you can do that, or oh, no, you can't. And that's why we, if you would like to entertain the idea of doing something like this, then you need to have me write, write a policy, review what other libraries do with their outside spaces, which from what I understand, a lot of libraries do not allow usage of their outside spaces by private groups, it's just for the library's purposes or the town's purposes. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to follow it that way. So I wanted to put it on here to get your take, and I know Jen has some thoughts on it, and I'm sure she'll share it with you, but you know, the rest of you are welcome to mm -hmm. obviously contribute to that as well. <laughs> My thoughts were, first of all, the, the liability. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing. What are, what are the town, I mean, for the town, what are we liable for if someone falls off of it? If some, you know, something, if it gets damaged or what, that was the, f the first thing that I thought of. And then, you know, like we had talked about the, the parking, I mean, what, who, who's going to be here? I, Even the staffing, right? I mean, right. The staffing. How, how would that we, work? We're stretched thin as it is. And even if we weren't, like, what if it's a Sunday? Right. Or is someone supposed to be here the whole time? Sure. And then, like you said, then we have the bathroom. Do we have to monitor? Like, what? they shouldn't be coming into the rest of the library. Yeah. I just felt that it wasn't, I, I just, in my opinion, I didn't think it was a good um, door to open. I just think we should just. 
Absolutely. <laughs> we had a lot of experience with this for the community center. Mm -hmm. And um, we eventually had to stop doing it okay. because too many issues. And probably the, the worst one is the fact that people may want to use the, the building on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday or an evening, uh, the facilities in it. Um, and if you're not open, like you said, that means someone has to be here. I'm sure you need to have bathrooms open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just, all the things you said, one of the problems we used to run into is people in the building with a volunteer who would volunteer to be here. And then they start doing things they shouldn't be doing, like breaking the rules of the building. Mm -hmm. And who's going to reprimand them or it become, became a real problem for us, yeah. even though we used to rely on donations from people to use the building. They'd give us $100 for an evening or something. It became not worth it. Right. So if my concern is all of that. I would vote, don't do it. Yeah. You know? Well, is alcohol an issue too? Is this like a wedding? Um, it's it's the it is a wedding, but it's not a reception. It's okay. just a ceremony. Yeah. So I don't think alcohol would be a concern in this case. But then that does open up the door to if, for another event. And if you don't have anyone here monitoring that anyway, how do you how do you right. know if right. it's if it's here or and not? You, you know. <clears throat> right. And now yeah. we're talking about like who and who pays for all that, and mm -hmm. we have all the costs and, and things involved. Now, people used to use the gazebo with the. Uh, Oh, oh, really? Okay. I wonder what they did there. Yeah. We just had, we did it for my daughter's wedding. She, um, we went there for pictures, and oh, you, pictures. we made a donation yeah, or open, something. Right, yeah. Okay. And so it was. It didn't matter. For it pictures. wasn't for her wedding. It was just Correct. for pictures right. with you know yeah. the trees and the gazebo and whatever. Mm -hmm. right. But um, there was nothing. It was just donation. You know, right. donate. Right. I can see her pictures. I mean, well, that would yeah, make that's like yeah. sense because you're, yeah. you know, it's not that many people. You're in, you're out. You're not it was just the wedding party and maybe a few other right, people. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's flattering that people would like to use our pavilion because it it's yeah. beautiful and, <laughs> and it's great. But I just think that that just opens up a okay. can of worms. Yeah, I agree. Um, so uh, we need to take a vote. Um, on whether or not we're going to move forward with Dina creating a policy or writing a policy right. to use the, or we're, we're just going to... I, 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 don't, I don't know if your vote should be so much to, about the policy, but maybe that At you're not, point, we're yeah. not having yeah, there yeah, outdoor, so, like exactly. you're voting that, to not yeah. vote Fine. That's private that would be yeah. Yeah. Vote. Just because you, you may want a policy at some point that Correct. states yeah. mm -hmm. We do not authorize the use of right. Right. Okay. Right. So. So. Yeah. Maybe I'll make a motion that at this time we would not let people allow people to use the facilities. Yeah. Outside. Outside. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have Library Legislative Day. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I skipped one. The, um, the retitling of the Patron Services Associate Job. Yeah. So not all of you were on the board, or most of you weren't on the board back in 2016. There used to be an a, a, um, director, assistant director position, and that was eliminated by the board in 2016, and it was replaced with this Patron Services Associate position. Um, what I would like to do is just change the title of the job, not the job itself, um, from patron services associate to patron services supervisor. Um, the job is supervising other staff, and it's supervising what happens with patron services. <laughs> um, that's a key function of what they do is supervision. Uh, and that's already written in the job description. Um, and. You know, as you, I believe, are all aware at this point, there is um, a union that is being formed for department heads and other people who are not part of the AFSCME union. This position is in the new union, and I feel like changing the title would just give it a little more weight in terms of negotiations 
um, with the union going forward. So. It also know, sounds better. <laughs> it does. I mean, the, at the time that we were developing the new job, I had worked with the former executive director of sales and kind of outlined exactly what I had in mind for the position. And she said, it sounds like you need a patron services associate. And where she came out with the term associate, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, um, because I, I don't know of any other job that has that title in, in the state. But it seemed like a great fit at the time <laughs> um, because it encompassed everything we were looking for. But you know, there is so much that goes on super, supervisory-wise with the position. Um, so it just, it just gives it a little more weight, I think, going forward. So because that is in your purview to change, um, and again, it's not changing the job description at all or the expectations on the employee, it's just changing the title. Would you want to go back to assistant director? Um, or is that problematic? It, I think it's problematic for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. This is a very small library. Right. You know, the uh, assistant director when I came on board um, was doing the role of the director basically. Mm -hmm. So the director wasn't managing the budget, wasn't doing the ordering, wasn't sure. doing personnel, wasn't doing mm -hmm. payroll. That's all things that a director of a small library should be doing. And that's things that the patron services associate, that's not written in that person's job description. Mm -hmm. So that would mean a rewrite of the job description gotcha. and it would mean the person who's in that position being willing to take on those responsibilities and they might not be, <laughs> or, or they may be, but they might not be, and then it, or they may be and they might not get anything for it. Um, so uh, monetarily wise. So I just don't think, there's no other library this size in the network that has assistant an assistant director, unless it's also an assistant director slash children's librarian or an assistant director slash reference librarian. It's not just Mm -hmm. an assistant director for a library of our size. So I would steer clear of it for that reason. That's my recommendation um, to you. I mean, I think the board, you know, I, you know, back when they were dealing with it in 2016, they very specifically didn't feel that position was necessary with, when you have a director, I think also it was born of the fact initially that the director was a part-time position initially in the Christian it wasn't a full-time position. Mm -hmm. So once that became full-time, probably didn't need an, uh, an assistant director as you know at, anymore. You needed it when the director was you know like an eight-hour a week position. Um, but anyway, that's um, I, I mean, I, that's my understanding of the history of why there was an assistant director. Um, Thank you. But you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, you know, the person who is in this position, we've discussed this very thoroughly, and I think mm -hmm. we both are happy with this, with this title change. And, and hopefully you will agree. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions or comments? Anyone else? No? Okay. Then we need a motion. Make a motion to change the title from associate to supervisor. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now we'll move on to the update on the library legislative day. So I wanted just to highlight the fact that um, we've had, I mean, this is the first time that legislative activities have taken place in person in a while. This is the first year for a while for that. And it's always been important, but for some reason this year it seems especially important. All, everything that's on the Mass Library Legislative Agenda, which is put out by the Mass Board of Library Commissioners. And I gave you all a handout. Um, I attended the sales um, legislative breakfast back in January. And then I attended Library Legislative Day at the State House um, earlier this month. That was on March 15th. Um, I got to meet with the Krishnitz representative, Representative Schmidt at both. He was at the breakfast and he was at Legislative Day. Oftentimes, we don't get to see any legislators from this area when I go up to the State House because they're not in. But he was in, which was great. And he even joined um, myself and other librarians from sales for lunch with um, Representative Cabral from New Bedford. So it was great that, I mean, it just felt very engaging. And I really wanted to highlight that to you all to show you that your representative seems to nice. really care about the community um, and what's happening and what concerns um, entities in the community might have and we do have a few concerns this year I mean fortunately we're not dealing with this directly here in a cushion it but 
I'm sure you all know just from reading the news or hearing the news um, in this area, not in a cushion it, but in this area, I and mean, there's a, a big drive to ban books from some local schools in the area, and that's made headlines, so you may have seen this. Um, but it's happening um, nationwide and, and is a very big concern nationally um, because the books either are written by or tend to be about the LGBTQ plus community um, or they deal with race issues or they're written by um, black people. So, um, and they, these are the books that are being challenged. And hopefully that does not make its way um, to a cushion it. If it does, I mean, we have a really solid collection development, development policy in place with a request for reconsideration of library materials attachment to it. So um, we do, we're good with that, um, which is important. Um, but I mean, a public library's reason for being is to support all members of its community. I mean, we don't tell you what to read. It's not what I want to read um, that I'm telling you you have to read. It's, you know, like a librarian isn't supposed to show any bias when purchasing materials. It's supposed to be something for everyone. <laughs> um, we really pride ourselves on that here with how we've developed this collection. Um, and we, I think, do offer a very welcoming space for people who do feel comfortable coming in and getting the material that they, they need and want. So that's a big issue on the state level right now. Um, also accessibility for all, so increasing um, the state budget so that um, the Perkins Talking um, Book Library, and there's also a similar library in Worcester, they have material for people who are vision impaired, um, either blind or just with a vision impairment and other um, accessibility issues, and they do share their material with the rest of the state, which is great for small libraries like ours, so we want to see that funding is continued um, for those libraries. Um, and there's also this like crazy thing happening right now with unfair ebook pricing <laughs> and limitations on ebooks, and that's something that I think we had ended up having a great conversation with Representative Schmidt about, and he ended up signing a bill that's now in the House for legislative change for this in Massachusetts. But I think it's like so important, just as library patrons, that you know, like if you go to Amazon, let's say, to buy a book, that you, a digital copy of a book. You get to keep that digital copy forever and you've maybe paid like $15 for it or less. I mean, they do the dollar deals, they're giving them away for free. There's a lot of things like that that happen. When I go to buy it for a cushion it to add to Libby, you know, the overdrive collection, um, I'm paying three times as much as a consumer is paying with our budget. And we can only keep it usually for a max of two years. Sometimes it's 24 checkouts or 26 checkouts. It's whatever the publisher puts on it. So that's why, you know, people think, oh, it's an ebook. It's, it's, I'm going to get that and I'm going to, you know, have it forever. Or why do I have to wait for an electronic book? Like, I, you know, when, I, when you place a hold on Libby, it's because of this, because libraries can't afford to keep up with the restrictions that are, pla that are put in place by publishers. Um, so that's a big priority this year. There is a bill, H3239, that's um, on the floor right now. They're discussing it. Hopefully that moves in a positive agenda. But um, I'm bringing that up to you today, too, that if you run into Representative Schmidt and you introduce yourself to him as a library trustee, you can thank him for supporting H3239. And um, feel free to shoot him an email or anything, also, if you don't run into him. Um, but. Um, if that passes, that would be a huge win for small libraries like ours and other, you know, even larger libraries that just cannot keep up budget-wise with these How did restrictions. That even happen? It's been happening all along. It it's just gotten a lot, lot worse. It's been happening all along, though, since since the beginning of of this whole push um, with um, e usage. But it's gotten worse over the last three years for certain. I think that you know publishers will end up saying the reason why that you know they they think that it should be this way um, is because if they if we one time paid fifty dollars for something one time, well that would be in use for ever for fifty dollars <laughs> and so they're losing money off of that versus you know if we are every couple of years expected to pay fifty dollars and that's just gonna that number is just gonna go higher um, then they're still making money off of us I think their fear is with libraries they won't make money off of us anymore but what 
And they're saying that like a physical book can maybe only get like 12 uses and then you're throwing it away and getting a new one, which I'm sure some of you who borrow books from us know that those things have gone out a lot more than 12 times. That's true. I mean, we try really hard to keep ours in really good condition. We have a staff member who's excellent in mending material, so in that you know, is returned, she, she's able to, you know, if something's returned damaged, she can hopefully do something so that we don't have to buy a second copy. But my God, we have books on the shelves mm -hmm. from the 80s that are still in use or before. And older libraries or other libraries have even older copies of things, which we see come through in delivery. So to use that as an excuse is just really an excuse on their part, I think, to make it, um, to see, I mean, they're afraid of losing money. Um, is what it comes down to. and um, But it's certainly not fair to the consumer who would like to be a library user, but you know, sees that their number 300 something in the queue and doesn't want to wait many months or several months, whatever the language is that Libby gives. Um, you know, unfortunately we're in a position, we also have Hoopla where there are no waits. There's a great collection on Hoopla so we can encourage our patrons who maybe can't find what they want on Libby in a timely fashion to try Hoopla. Um, but not all libraries have that ability um, in their budgets. And just because we have it now doesn't mean we'll always have it. So um, getting getting something like this to pass is, would be a big win. So I really just wanted to highlight a few of the key things happening and just make you aware. That's what you did. Yeah. It was, um, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, um, great. Is this a problem in Massachusetts or like the whole thing? Oh, it's everywhere. Okay. It's not just Massachusetts. It's definitely everywhere, but Massachusetts is, other st states have stepped up to try to do something also, mm -hmm. and Massachusetts is, is one of the first to step up in the way that it has to try to put a stop to it. Um, and I also let Representative Schmidt know that for a small library like ours, the State Aid to Public Libraries program, as you know, is so important to mm -hmm. us because we use a big chunk of that to support our um, materials expenditure requirement. And um, so let him know that even though that's not really highlighted so much on the agenda, it is, it is key for small libraries in particular. So um, it just I really appreciate his time and it was encouraging, I think, for me. I mean, I've been every year that I have been able to go in person, I've been. But in the past, I, I maybe I, I know one year I, I did get to see Representative Hendricks there. But for the most part, I'm not used to seeing a representative from a cushion at when I go because I'm norm normally talking to their aides. So it was pretty refreshing that he was actually in nice. Boston for this. So very much appreciated. That's great. Yeah. I just dropped in. Thank you. And oh, that's the other thing I wanted to say. So we sat down and I was like, well, I'm just going to make a plug for this and started talking a, a little more eloquently than I did just now. It's the dang camera. <laughs> um, but I was so excited when I logged on to the state website the next day to look at the bill and he had signed on in support of the bill, which he did after nice. speaking with us. So also I think, you know, it's, that made me feel very, very good also. So, anyway. You can take some credit. That's that. right. I am awesome. taking, I'm taking all of the credit for it. <laughs> good for you. No, good for you. Good for you. Thanks. That's it. All right. Well, we'll, we'll roll right into the director's report. Okay. Um, so I did the new format, and again, it's, it's, two, it's two months worth of a report, so I tried to point that out so that people wouldn't be like, what's well, in here? Um, but I also tried to just separate, separate some of the sections to make it a little easier on myself, but also I hope it's easier to read this way. So if it's okay, I will keep doing it um, in this way, um, just to make it a little clearer in my mind, too, as I'm writing it. Um, but the, couple of things that I just wanted to highlight. Um, I wanted to start with talking about the um, first ever sales library road trip, which is going to be happening in April. We'll have more information on our website soon and on social media. We've got to do a press release and we're going um, to also have hopefully some solid information about it in April's newsletter. Um, but sales, and this isn't an, an initiative we took on, another network did it and had great success with it and some other libraries in sales said, well, we can do this too. And then 
got the majority of sales libraries on board, which is great. Um, but for two weeks in April, it's April 18th through April 29th, patrons throughout the state, or and especially throughout the southeastern part of the state, will be encouraged to visit your local library, see the local sites. And if they do visit, they'll receive a map of all the participating libraries, which is pretty cool. And I believe all of the libraries have purchased some sort of stamp or special way to designate on the map that they visited that library. We have an, a red apple to tie in to Krishnit and apples, even though it's not apple season. Um, but um, we did get go with an apple. Sandra's working on a bookmark that will highlight things like the Apple Peach Festival so that people who come here, maybe for the first time, will know that they can come back in September um, and visit a Krishnit for Apple Peach. Um, on the website um, that is being worked on right now for the road trip, the state's working on that. Um, they um, have highlighted a Krishnit Creamery there and also the Krishnit Sawmill, so when people come here, they can visit the creamery or maybe take a walk at the sawmill. So um, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, we're planning some extra programs for the, that time period. We have Toe Jam Puppet Band coming on Friday, April 21st, which will hopefully, the weather will allow us to do an outdoor program. And um, another group, the Hot Club Cheese Roll, that's an adult concert, um, will be half birth, it could be for families. Um, that's scheduled for Saturday, April 29th. And, and there's still more coming. So people who go to the website, um, which isn't up yet, so I won't give the, the name of it just yet, but it will be in the newsletter, hopefully. Um, if they go to that site, they'll be able to see what events we're holding and what other library events are, are going on. And uh, hopefully, they'll, they'll come check us out. So dates again? April 18th through the 29th. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. How many? Um, how many are on the map that are participating? Oh boy. Roughly. Well, roughly. Is it uh, 30 -ish. thirty? Oh, thirty. Oh, well, that's say. good. Twenty-five to thirty. It's only a few libraries in the network that aren't participating. So that's pretty cool. Yes. So I think it'll be it'll be fun. So more to come, and, and hopefully you'll stop by and get a map, and maybe visit a few local libraries, see what what's happening. Um, near behind. Um, I also wanted to mention we still have the Boston Bruins Pajama Drive um, that runs until uh, this Friday, the 31st. So if anybody has pajamas that they've been holding on to at home, the deadline's this Friday. So just get them in, and then Sandra coordinates with the local PACE office for pickup. Um, I believe we have 40 pairs right now, about, about 40, That's so, which is great. And they will stay local, which is wonderful. So we appreciate everyone who's come in um, to do that. Um, and other than that, I, mean, I think you can see we've been pretty busy over the past couple of months. Um, we've had some turnover. We do have two new staff members as of January. Um, and in fact, one just started today. Um, so that's been keeping us busy because Again, I know I've said it before, people don't realize the training that's involved with new people. We just had an issue come up last week that people who have worked here for a very long time had never seen before and weren't sure, you know, what caused it, it to happen. And it's, there's, there's so many, like, intricacies to what we do. I know it looks easy, but the, you're dealing with a computer, um, so it not, the computer doesn't always spit back at you what you think it's going right. to, which <laughs> um, we're no different to that here. So um, training people is certainly is taking up a lot of time, as you can imagine, but we're doing it, and we're very excited with our new staff. Um, we brought back the knitters group, um, and that's actually being done by, not by the library staff, but there's some volunteers from the community who are putting it on. We had 23 people come the first time. It's yeah, going to be- great. I was yeah. there. We were, <laughs> yeah. We've heard great things <laughs> about it, and we've gotten a lot of questions. It was since. full. It was a full house, and, and the um, online on Facebook, it looked like a lot of people were going to need help. But that yeah, really just, wasn't the case. I would say 15 out of 23 knew just what they were doing. They had their little projects nice. and they just sat there. That's and then great. in one corner. Mm -hmm. Is her name Haley? 
Yes. Okay. She was kind of helping people, and there were a couple mm -hmm. other people with experience helping, but no, oh, it was nice. really funny. Yeah. yeah. It was cute. It was I really think funny. it's a neat community thing. I yeah. yeah. There's people of all ages who came. Like young yeah. kids. Always fun. Yeah. Always yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. I'm in the church group and it's very small, but it's yeah. during the day, you know, people who yeah. work and mm -hmm. that. Right. It was yeah. funny to see that many people. Yeah. Well, hopefully oh, that just all continues. All ages. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> all ages. Yes, Margaret Tabs is it, brought her two little kids and there was one little boy, I think he was eight knitting mm -hmm. with his grandmother. Wow. Yeah. That's Which is great. nice. Not too many teenagers, but right. that's yeah. not a library group. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Have you ever seen as a Jonah's hands, uh, the young, young boy? Can crochet. I mean, he'll sit here talking like this, and he's going and going and oh, going. Wow. The things he makes are wow. incredible. Wow. So I, I will I have him on Facebook or something, so it comes up. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, he just, uh, he, they adopted him, and uh, he was wow. having problems wow. and everything. Yeah. And somehow he got into the crocheting, and oh, it's incredible. Oh, now he gets he gets yarn from everybody. And, right. I mean, it's a big business that he's got now, wow. the things that he makes and <laughs> wow. stuff. And he's only, he's only, well, I don't even know if he's a teenager. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Well, it's the second Monday of the month. Um, so. Sounds good. <laughs> so, and any, any aspiring Jones out there. <laughs> there you go. Second Monday of the month, 6 o'clock. And they met for like a little over an hour, I think, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, um, like quite a seven she came in and said, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wrap, it Wrap it up. up. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's back. The friends have been sponsoring a few programs recently, which have been really wonderful. There was a Ukrainian egg painting workshop here last night. That the max was 15 people, and 15 people were here doing that. Um, so we appreciate, as always, the friends sponsoring these programs so that we can offer these free programs to the community, um, which is which is really good to do. Um, but other than that, unless you had any questions about this. This novel I wrote for you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask a question sure. about this I bet. Oh, okay, yes. I was going to mention it and then I just thought, am I going to mind just, when yeah. I read it? I have so to read it three times. The so Apps Me staff, they have a, a sick time buyback in their mm -hmm. contract. Yeah. Um, and that the buyback was always paid for out of a non-library account, just mm -hmm. a town account, the buybacks were paid for. And the interim accountant in reviewing that feels, and I, and I do agree that this is the correct practice, that it should come out of the budget, that the, you know, the department's budget, mm -hmm. not the town's, this, whatever this bank is that they were using. So that way you get a clearer picture of how much money is being spent by the department. I mean, when, if they have a vacation buyback, we pay for that, and that's always come out of the library's budget. So okay. why is the sick time budget yeah. not that coming makes out of sense, that? Okay. I wasn't aware of Okay. That. Yeah, and I realize as I'm talking about that, <coughs> put that in mm -hmm. the vacation okay. buybacks always it makes come sense out of. to come back, but does that mean you have less money to spend someplace else? Sure. Well, in the tech line, <laughs> so we only sense. can spend that for the tech, so it's coming out of the tech line. So mm -hmm. I can't spend that on anything else unless we had a shortfall somewhere and, and went and got it approved in June mm -hmm. from the finance committee that, and the town administrator that we could take, move that money from the tech line and spend it somewhere else. But there's a lot of restrictions on what that can be spent for. So if, and again, if, if we did say we found we ended up with a shortfall because somebody had a large buyback, mm. um, which we, we did have somebody with a large buyback mm -hmm. um, this year, um, and a, a, a quite a large buyback earlier this year who had been employed here for um, six years. Um, if that was going to negatively impact that tech line, then we would go okay. ask for a request okay. to I transfer. Okay, I think it makes sense, to do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then right. I went to, like, right. right. What does that mean? That was right. my thought exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's not, yeah, it's not like, money that we could just okay. up and spend on mm -hmm. something else. And if we did end up overspending in that line, they would then, we Thank would you. ask for the money and they would transfer it from another account um, <clears> to cover it. <throat> so it wouldn't okay. be like we then suddenly had no money to pay the staff in that line. I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to, and I said, well, I'll just wait and see if anyone asks. <laughs> I put a big But I do think it makes sense. I do think it makes sense. That is 
the latest. And it's something like, as I mentioned, like I was doing the reconciliation reports from November and December and couldn't get them to match up. And it was, you know, and then in January, and I was writing on the reports, this isn't matching up and this is why. And then in, in January or February, when I did the January report, I finally heard, oh, yeah, no, that's because we're not doing it that way anymore. Um, so now we know. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah, I have one more. Okay, yes. sorry. Why not? <laughs> okay, ask away. No, that's no more. I just thank you for the final paragraph, your small request uh, oh, of yeah. us introducing ourselves to the new staff, too. I think sometimes we're rushing in and out ourselves and don't pay too much attention. But it's important for them to know who we are. It so is. Thank you. Thank um, you for the reminder. No, and, and it, mm -hmm. I think it's just with the recent turnover, I stop and I realize, well, of course they don't know yeah. who, you know, I'll say, oh, Jen's coming in to sign something. Well, they might not know who Jen, Jen is, and they might right. feel awkward saying, oh, by the way, Jen, I'm the new employee here. Yeah. I, mean, right. I don't mean to Correct. say, well, Jen out, but, no, no. Yeah. but yeah. This, if, if you're doing it, mm -hmm. and even if you, you then, you know, if they're like, yes, we have met before, who cares? Like, you know, like exactly. they, it reiterates to them, you know, who you are. And I'm going to make sure I talk to Kristen that the officers of the friends too. It would be great if they knew who, you know, the officers mm -hmm. from the friends group you know, um, are so that, just so that they're, I mean, not so that they treat you any differently. I mean, I think right. you know that our staff treat everyone the, right, the right. same. Yeah. Um, but just more so, so that they are comfortable when I'm saying, the trustees are coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't go into, oh my God, I don't know who the trustees are. <laughs> so be thank you. Um, yeah, it could be anybody. <laughs> um, but thank you. And, and like I said, I, I do, it is partly a morale piece mm -hmm. um, to me because yep. I think, you know, we're all still coming off a very trying time as exactly. a as a world. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of people have also had personal things going on. And so to keep the morale up, especially when people are only here 19 hours a week or less, can be a little tricky. So that this will, I think, be something that helps, and I appreciate that. And one more comment yes. on your feel good emails on Friday. I thought that was a That's a great idea. Can we all get one of those? Yeah. <laughs> just saying. When they're really good, I'll send them Not to you. Too. Sometimes there's send very cute send them. There's I was very hoping cute. to get some. There's very, very send it. There's very cute pictures sometimes. So when there's yeah. a cute picture, I'll send it to you. Oh, okay. so sometimes I, I, I've noticed like, um, you know, I'll read something very positive that's written about the library on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know not all the staff are on Facebook. Yeah. So I'll, like, block out the person who's made the comment, but I'll share the, what they've said with staff because it's, nice. it's an opportunity for them to hear that people outside of the mm -hmm. four walls are sure. saying how good they feel about coming here. So I do that sometimes, and I hope that doesn't stop anyone from writing com positive comments. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's... It makes me feel good when I read it, so I know it, you know, it helps make the staff feel good too. So, and um, I did include January and February statistics on the same page. I forgot to point that out. And we're, you know, trucking along, recovering from coming back from COVID. I think, you know, in January we dipped a little bit, but then we went back up in February, and that just could have been the timing of when people borrowed material, and we also had a very busy week during February vacation, um, which is typical. So um, you know, it's nice to see um, numbers going up, of course, and it's also nice to see our program statistics that were not existent a year ago. It's nice to see program statistics. Um, now, because we still hadn't resumed indoor programming a year ago. This is right around the time that we started doing indoor programming, so last year. So it's um, nice. And uh, also, I will point out that in March, we already know we've surpassed, we have our highest um, study room usage oh, ever cool. this past March. Um, and we're not even at the end of the month yet, but we already know it, it beats Absolutely. other um, years, including before um, COVID, we wow. had a lot of requests for people um, to use the rooms, which is great. Mm -hmm. so, Definitely. Yeah. Nice. Words get yeah. up. It, yes, yeah. which All is right. wonderful. That's awesome. Feels good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any other, do you have anything else, Nancy? No. Nope. <laughs> no. Don't be sorry. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. Anyone, you. Does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> no one? Okay. So. Do you want to s try to set the meeting? 
Yes. Um, I was looking at um, Tuesday, April 25th. If that's possible at 4 o'clock. I can't do that day. Okay. But if you have another day. Um, we could do, can you not do that week or is it just that day? Just that day, that okay. week. Because then it, within that week, um, we could also do um, April 20, Thursday, April 27th. And I mean, if you wanted to just go two weeks, um, we could do Tuesday, April 11th as well. Um, but that's just two weeks away. The week of school right. vacation is too hard yeah, um, with agree. staffing levels that week. And yes. I'm yeah. sure our personal schedules too. <laughs> The 27th works for me, but does it work for everyone else? Yeah. Otherwise, we can do it exactly. the Tuesday, but I won't be here. 27th? Oh, please don't say that. April. <laughs> okay. And that's so. a Wednesday I'll take it. It's right? Thursday the 27th. Thursday the 27th, okay. yep. Thursday the 27th at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. It's actually better because I'm technically yep. on vacation on Tuesday the 25th, but I was, <laughs> see? But I was like, oh, that's really the only Tuesday in the entire month of April. That, that makes sense. That works. Okay. Great. Okay. So perfect. So we have that. Anybody have anything else? No? Well then, you know what we need. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> yes. And... Do you have a second? Oh, I'll second it. And all in favor? Aye. 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 This March 28th, 2023 meeting of the Cushion Public Library Board of Trustees is officially adjourned. It is 5 of 5. Thank you.